Hi, welcome to the 48th episode of the Decompression Chamber. I'm your host, Mario, and our uh, opening quote today is going to be from the uh, philosopher Confucius. The quote goes, It is easy to hate and it is difficult to love. This is how the whole scheme of things works. All good things are difficult to achieve and bad things are very easy to get. Roll the intro. That has me rare as me staying on pop travel just hit the dare and wind up in the bog. Get the mud off my feet, dragging low through the street, I've been feeling so odd. Mm-hmm. On the cusp by my reach, as a love I can see, but it's too fucking hot. Oh. I need young gender views, so I'm come better me, balance has been in talks. I've been feeling so odd, yeah. Yeah, so um, normally uh, I like to give my own spin on quotes or I like to give my interpretation, but I'll just let that one sit in because um, I think it holds true to a lot of things in life. Um, a lot of the time it is easier to just like you know the line between where you are and hating something is way easier than where you are and loving something at least that's the way i feel i don't know um sometimes i feel like i'm i'm quite a judgmental person you know uh i don't judge people on like immutable characteristics like uh you know race or sex or gender or anything like that but um you know if somebody makes lots of loud noises while chewing i definitely judge them for it um if they like are speaking badly about someone like behind their back but also within the vicinity in a in a loud way i judge them for it um if they're playing music on a speaker on public transport i judge them for you know there are reasons why i'll judge people and um realistically it's just because i guess it's easy it makes life easier to categorize to generalize you know um by the way i'm just thinking right now whether it's distracting that there's changing color lights in the background but it's my video so i don't care but um yeah i guess what i was what i meant to say is that life's so complicated and there's so much going on that it's it's hard to give each person in each situation the full nuance to actually consider the positives and the negatives sometimes it's just easier sometimes it's just more convenient to just put something in a box and just decide that's where they are you know but um life's complicated it is there's so many reasons and so many backstories and like so many explanations for different things that you can never really see all of the truth just from one perspective at least that's the way i see it um yeah an example of this i'd use is that so we did we came off this big shooting exercise and um one of my one of the guys who oversaw our project one of the lecturers he's like a long time industry professional he's been a camera operator on so many different stuff and like he he is legitimately like a top quality practitioner and like a a really well esteemed professional but um there's been times uh like w- while he's teaching me where he's been very kind of blunt or unhelpful what i might call unhelpful like an example of this was my job was to do with the camera and like i had to pretty much know the ins and outs of the camera how it worked and and to ensure that it ran smoothly and and how you know the higher ups wanted it to like the higher ups i'm calling the dp and the director director of photography and the director of the film and um realistically like it's a complex machine it's a old film film camera from maybe the 1980s and like i pretty i did a pretty good job of like figuring out overall what the camera was about how it worked and what made it tick and however on one of our last practices I was having an issue with there's a little screen on the side there's a panel and I couldn't figure out how to like um how to see how much battery there was left and because it's it's on this like eight um unit displays you know there's ones where it's only straight lines and the numbers are like an eight will be like you know what I'm trying to do like that and um I didn't I mistook a what looked like a u that is actually what v was for volts and so as I'm trying to figure this out um I asked the, the lecturer, like, hey, can you ha- give me a hand? And he's like, you should know this. I'm like, okay, I recognize that I may have done my job poorly by not knowing this. However, in this moment, you telling me that I don't know this doesn't help me figure it out, you know? And, like, I'd been through all the modes, and clearly I'd failed to recognize what I should have. And I was like, please, just tell me what I'm looking for. And, like, it took me, like, two more tries after literally just showing him that I was spamming through stuff and I didn't understand it. I read, like, an online PDF of the... Um, the manual of the camera and I still couldn't figure it out and I was like listen the manual's been unhelpful I'd like if you just told me this could be a learning moment and even then it was still like it was almost like I was in a different train of thought to him and and you know I don't know at, at that point I felt frustrated and it was very easy for me to just mentally put him in the box of just you know unhelpful or unpleasant whereas realistically just like anyone he's a complex and and well-reasoned person you know um and even like just in online lectures he's very personable very nice and helpful and um you know I'd, I'd sometimes stop to him and have a conversation with him during shooting and he would be such a kind helpful like actual insightful person 
and um yeah i don't know i guess there's there's this thing in me that like it's conflicting isn't it it's conflicting to to have time where you really appreciate someone and, and you find their their presence in your life valuable but then times where they've made it stressful and difficult in a way that you don't really understand or you don't feel like they should have and um yeah it's it's it'd be it would be nice to just put someone in a box of oh screw them they're in the negative box or oh yeah this person's all great put them in the positive box but inevitably they're going to ruin that that false category you've created or that I've created you know generalities don't work I mean they can be used to describe a situation but in all in terms of actually accurately representing re uh, reality gen generalities aren't too great but um yeah nah so that's just kind of something I've been thinking about recently um particularly there's someone else in my life who I, I won't even care to mention but um they're just generally unpleasant like in certain ways that they act but it's just like when you actually see like potential of good and when you see that someone at their core means well and is trying to do their best but they still aren't able to like properly you know create a positive vibe and energy around them then they're kind of squandering like that that good that they have with not squandering but you know they're not fully realizing the potential that they have and um i guess this makes me think about myself as well um it, situations like those make me look at myself and I go, which which are the parts of me that that are those core good parts that that I need to fully maximise and realise, and which are the parts that you know I I could do away with because the parts of yourself that you could and should do away with aren't aren't exactly just going to disappear easily. You know, um, you have to be conscious of where you're making mistakes and you have to you have to try and be aware of of where you're going wrong. And um, normally, luckily, the world has a way of, feed of giving you feedback, you know. Uh, I'm a big believer in what goes around comes around. And hopefully, people who, you know, act in certain ways, you hope that the fucking boomerang of life is going to come and hit them in the back of the head. But um, as I said before, life's complicated, and sometimes it doesn't work out that way. But I don't know. I'm, I guess th there'd be a lot of time when I was younger where I felt like, I wasn't receptive to to learning the lesson because I wasn't willing to accept that I was flawed or there was a flaw of mine that was kind of making itself obvious and um I don't know now now sometimes I wonder whether I'm I'm looking at that too much I'm looking too too much so much so that I don't focus enough on on what I do have on on what I can do and um and yeah maybe if I just focus on what I can do and keep pushing with it then then I'll kind of do better with myself I don't know yeah, <laughs> I thought I'd run a bit longer with that, but apparently that's that's what my brain had. Um, yeah, it's been a bit of a. I've been describing it as a laundry day today, but but not just for laundry. It's, it's been a bit laundry day for my life. You know what I mean? Just kind of like taking care of errands, um, going to the shops. I've been, I've been. The reason why I'm stood up during this video is I'm trying to improve my posture. I've been doing exercises as well. Like basically, if you look at me from a side angle, I'm exaggerating it now to make a point, but I slouch. Then my neck comes forward, so I've been trying to first of all stand up taller, and then second of all kind of bring my neck back a bit, you know. And so there's exercises that do that where you literally just tuck your chin back and um, kind of want. Basically, I got s so many knots in my upper back. Like, if only you could. Obviously, <laughs> introducing the new 4D experience. Touch Mario's trap muscles to see how many knots he has in his back. But um, no, what I mean to say is that. It is unbelievable how much stress and tension I got in my upper back, and I've been literally looking up exercises, and pretty much this was stemmed from um, I've I've been having a bit of an issue from my knee from these longer runs that I've been so proud of. <laughs> I think um, what's happened is I've I've had a bit of an issue with the way that I land with my feet, and I think that that's st like been causing an impact to my knee and. And yeah, so hopefully I've been watching videos on how to correct that, and then it kind of made me realise if I'm correcting my form and my posture when it comes to running, I should probably try and correct my form and my posture with everyday life. You know, I mean, I'm trying to just like stand a bit straighter and, and be put together a bit more normal. You know, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I I wonder how much of it is physiological and how much is psychological. You know, like. I think eventually if you get used to just like holding good posture and being aware of you, of yourself and trying to keep that kind of like healthy range of operation or whatever, 
I think I think it becomes more natural and easy. But um, realistically, I live a sedentary lifestyle. And a lot of time, I'm sat either here or, or lying down there. Especially if I'm like lying down, I got two pillows behind my neck, like which I like to do for comfort, but it's not great for overall posture, you know. And um, I'd hate to have back issues and, and neck issues later in life, you know. So yeah, I've been using a foam roller that my mate Jay lent me. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, that's the thing is that even though I wasn't able to go on like a run as much as I want, would have wanted to, um, I managed to do my my home workout, blah blah, do my laundry and fucking. Oh, one of my roommates, Jack. Um, he's such a legend. Uh, basically, yeah, I really like insult like humor between friends. Just like you know. You just say an insult you don't mean because it's like it's a fun, inventive way to try and like I don't know. It, sometimes it's funny when you insult a friend and they insult you back, and you just kind of have fun doing it. You know, I don't think it's something that I can intellectually analyze to the point that it actually makes sense. <laughs> I just think it's fun, and um, so yeah, uh, uh, Jack is one of those friends who actually does it with me in in a fun, interesting way, and um, as <laughs> as much as I, I like to joke and insult him, um, he he came up with an idea um and he reached out to people in our flat today to to help him make a short film and honestly it's such a good idea that as i'm standing here i'm literally like i'm buzzing with energy about helping him film it because um because yeah he, he just kind of came up with an idea he popped up he was like hey lads let's get together let's get some you know some pen to paper figure out what we're gonna do and, and get to shooting you know and um and yeah, it's just exciting. Like the reason I know I'm in the right line of business or I'm studying the right thing is that when my friend came with this idea, I was like, "Yes, let's go." I wanna, you know, I sat down with him. He showed me some test footage he'd done, and and it just makes me excited for the future, you know. So hopefully, I can get involved. And he even said I might be able to put it up on this channel as a uh, as a feature or whatever. But um, obviously, I'd want to have his his name front and center because it's his idea and he's kind of birthed it but you know films are collaborative art we're here to collaborate and work together and share ideas and and that's what it's all about you know um in the future i'd like to do some like longer form podcasts where we kind of sit down and and we come up with sketch ideas or we we discuss like we break down how we want to make a short film or because i think it'd be interesting as a film student to give that like perspective like the background in terms of what goes into production because i think particularly as someone who used to be a great enjoyer of films but didn't know much about how they were made i definitely definitely underappreciated how complicated how well orchestrated every single aspect of production is like to the point where you know you might look at a shitey film like um man some people are gonna hate me but like the fast and furious films or um you know point at any like rubbish quote-unquote rubbish tv show and and what even our lecturers say it like a show like casualty for example is it's basic it's not shot in but it's shot in a way that's functional and it makes sense and people can watch and enjoy it you know and so it's actually been done in a thought out way and um and there's a lot to learn from things even if it's not like something you can subjectively enjoy like a lot of the time when i'm like writing when I'm watching something, I'm not just thinking about how much I enjoy the scene, but I'm kind of, I'm looking at where the people are placed in the frame, I'm looking at, you know, how the props are settled, I'm looking at, you know, maybe where the light might have been, or how they're trying to imitate, like, indoor lighting, so just anything like that, it's, it's in my mind, because there, there are no accidents, like, there are very f rarely accidents on the screen. What they're doing ha is very precise and has a, like a very careful way of being put into place to give a certain effect, you know. And obviously, this is going to sound obvious to a lot of you watching, but um, I think when you watch something from that perspective, it makes you realise just how impressive like the art is of filmmaking. And um, obviously, I'm a film student, so I'm going to wank off to fucking stupid like high-level film ideas. But like, what I mean to say is that, you know. I have this perspective of being behind the curtain of production, as it were, of like, you know, not just appreciating film for an art form, but like trying to understand and match the levels of sophistication and orchestration that go into making it, you know? And so maybe if I could use this channel or use my filmmaking abilities to not just make a short film that's worth like showing and worth making, but also make a behind the scenes project documentary mini series whatever um that goes on behind the scenes it would make it would make such an interesting series i think at least even if people didn't want to watch it i would want to make it just for my own um satisfaction and i think there's a weird duality in in what i'm doing in that i have to consider w 
primarily it's what what I want to do. It's the message I want to send. It's kind of what art I want to create. But also to a certain extent, you have to consider who's this, who's going to see this. What's a, what's the effect going to be? What are you trying to achieve? You know. So there is an interplay there, and there are decisions to be made. But the future is exciting. And like I've, recently, I've just been having. I, I got poster notes here. What's this one say? Oh no, that's one of my daily uh, affirmations. Yeah, so basically I had an idea today to compare the origins of cinema to the space race in my um in my next video essay. And so that's not really a spoiler because there's a lot that's going on in it and um I'm still trying to work work my way through the research of it, but yeah, it's intriguing. So you never know. The future the future might hold more than you think and and I think I'd like to be able to look back to now and think this was just the beginning of a real good like role of of creative work and decisions you know I'm hoping that I can collaborate with people I'm hoping I can make connections and and I'm hoping I can use filmmaking as an experience to learn more about myself you know so if if you want to take anything from this video um, it's to follow your passions and enjoy what you do because you don't get to do it forever so yeah thank you very much for watching and have a good afternoon peace well it's not always afternoon you get what I mean for the shade, uh, I don't wanna give myself no option, so I drop the visor just to wake up. Ain't no trippin' over pay stubs, ain't no trippin' on the vague stuff. All the things that I can make up, I'm a thinker, not a maker.